Hey guys, welcome to Franklin Woodworks. I'm going to build a headboard for my daughter's bed in her dorm room. To make it interesting, it's going to have a reading light and an outlet so she can charge her cell phone, tablet, or laptop while she's using it in the bed. If you've ever lived in a dorm room, they don't have a lot of space, and her bed is jacked up so there's storage underneath. Climbing down off the bed to turn off the light would be a pain, so I think the reading light is a good idea. First off, this is going to be a cheap project. I want it to be very rustic and look like it's made out of barn wood, which in my area is extremely expensive to buy. I'm also going to do something that will cause many of you to cringe. I'm going to glue solid wood onto plywood. I did a lot of research on the subject and it appears that if I'm going to have a delamination failure due to wood movement, I've probably got about three years before that happens. The humidity level in the dorm is fairly stable and she's only going to be in the dorm for a year, maybe two at the most. And since the headboard will be built specifically for this particular bed, it will probably go in the trash when she moves out anyway. So, with all that in mind, I cut a piece of half-inch plywood to rough size. Then I resaw half-inch pine on the table saw. When I set up the fence, I make sure that the cut was asymmetrical so that the headboard will appear as though it was made from random barnwood planks. After making the first pass, I make sure that after I flip the wood for the second pass, the same face is against the fence. Then I move over to the miter saw and cut the planks to the rough dimension of the plywood. Next, I cut those planks into two pieces, making the length of those two pieces random but I make sure I keep the two sections of each piece together and you'll understand why when it all comes together. I install a 45 degree chamfer bit in my router table and give each plank a small bevel on all four sides. Then I lay out how I want the pieces to fit on the plywood. Using the matched pieces I kept together but in a random pattern. That way each row is the same length and I don't waste any more wood than is necessary. Now it's time to glue it up. After spreading the glue, I tack the planks in place using pin nails. Now I can cut the board down to final dimension. Because the sides are slightly uneven, because the boards are tacked onto plywood, I'm using my homemade track saw to get perfect edges. And I'll leave a link to the video of how I made it in the description. Notice how even though the workpiece is moving around, the saw stays in the perfect location? Try that with your average homemade circular saw guide. And for those of you who say I should have clamped down my workpiece to keep it from moving, come on. We've all done this, so don't be a killjoy. This track saw is awesome, and it costs less than 20 bucks to build. I add full dimension planks to the sides and the top, not only to act as a visual frame for the headboard, but to also give me a space to enclose the reading light, light switch, and electrical outlet. But before I get to install the electrical stuff, I have to prepare the wood to look really old. This is one of the greatest things I've discovered for aging wood. I start by brewing myself a strong, steaming cup of tea. After taking a sip, I apply the tea to the wood. This introduces tannins to the wood that will react with the mixture that I add next. 
In my cabinet of finishing supplies, right next to the polyurethane and shellac, is a jar of cider vinegar with steel wool. I keep a jar of this nasty mixture on hand because it takes about a week to make a good batch, so I always have some ready to go. So after I make sure the wood is completely dry after the application of the tea, just watch what happens as I apply the vinegar to the wood. It begins to turn the wood a grayish brown almost instantly, and just like that, I've got a hundred year old barn wood. Now I'm not going to talk about my electrical skills, but rest assured I made sure this thing won't catch on fire. I wired it so the switch will turn off the light, but the electrical outlet will always be energized for charging portable electronics. I made the mounts for the switch in the outlet using a small trim router, then added a couple more pieces of wood to the top of the headboard so that everything would be hidden from view for all but the person in the bed. couple of good coats of satin lacquer and I'm almost finished. All I have to do is add the supports to attach the headboard to the bed. As always, I welcome any constructive comments that we can all learn from. Just keep in mind that I'm well aware that my method of construction is not going to hold up in the long run, but it doesn't have to. Even if you think my intelligence is in question, you can show your compassion by subscribing to this channel. Just think how much better I'll be if you have the opportunity to comment on all of my projects. Seriously, you owe it to yourself to do this. Thanks for watching, and there you go.